on this um, Sunday in the middle of May, I'm going to say to you yet the last time this year, Happy Easter! I'm Paul Nixon and this is the last Sunday of Easter at the United Methodist Church of Palm Springs. Easter is about a six week season. Um, during that season um, this year, Pastor Jane has been leading us through a series um, about the called the Resurrected Body and um, how we, in the wake of Jesus not being physically on earth, we pick up the slack together. And together we're able to do so much more than one person could do, even if he was Jesus, all right? And so um, today is the final piece of that um, series, and it's also Sign Up a Rama, which is an opportunity to stick your toe in the water, either to inquire or to volunteer in any number of ministries that are connected with the United Methodist Church. Um, so that this isn't just theory, but we're thinking tangibly about how we together are doing the stuff that Jesus would be doing if he were here physically. So um, today we're going to be um, looking at um, some opportunities. Um, there is a, um, a sign up a brochure that is actually linked at, below the screen on the YouTube channel and you can pull that up and look at it. It was also emailed this week. You might check your email um, if you're on the church email list. Um, but we're going to be um, exploring how we can get involved today. I would encourage you to grab a pen at this point in the service because you may want to make some notes to yourself as you think about that with us this morning. And if you were viewing live with others, um, welcome one another by sharing your name in the comment section and your favorite thing that you like to bring to a church potluck. Pastor Jane here, welcoming you to this time of worship. And if you ask me what's my favorite thing to bring to a potluck, like many of you, I'm sure the first thing coming to your mind, Jello. All right, now that we have that decided, I want to also tell you just how excited I am about the worship service we have coming up today. And uh, so let's get started with some time of inviting the presence of the Holy Spirit to be in us and around us and moving through us. It's such a fabulous thing to, to do, and I do that every Sunday when, or every time we get together to worship. Sometimes it's Sunday. Anyway, let's uh, breathe in and breathe out. <sighs> Breathing in. God's Spirit, and it is filled with peace and light and love and power. We breathe out our fears and our frustrations and our preoccupations. 
And whatever is making us angry and irritated, just let it go. Breathing in that fresh new life of God and breathing out what's old and no longer helpful for living a life of love. Breathing in, breathing out, allowing ourselves to be conscious of the indwelling of the spirit filling our mind and our heart, removing the tension from our shoulders, bringing light and new life to the whole of our being as everything else goes away. O oh, great and gracious God, we are so grateful for your presence with us always and for creating us as beings that can sense that presence and be empowered by that presence, be transformed by that presence, even in the blink of an eye. We're so grateful that you are here with us, filling us and filling the space where we are worshiping, connecting us to all there is, so grateful for this time to praise you in more ways than perhaps we can know. May that be so in our learning session today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now Paul is going to bring us our scripture reading for today. Another reading that um, is part of our post-Easter but in the midst of Eastertide season observance, as we think about what it means to be a resurrected body and how Jesus is praying to God so that it will be so. The scripture today is a prayer, um, a very famous prayer of Jesus where he's praying for us while he's still in this world thinking about the fact that he's not long for this world and that we were going to be picking up the work. Um, this is his prayer for us. John 17. Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Abba, the hour has come. Glorify your only begotten that I may glorify you. Now they know everything you've entrusted to me does indeed come from you. I entrusted to them the message you entrusted to me, and they received it. They know that I really came from you. They believe it was you who sent me, and it's for them that I pray. Not for the world, but for these you've given me, for they really are yours, just as all that belongs to me is yours, and all that belongs to you is mine. It is in them that I have been glorified. I am in the world no more, but while I am coming to you, they are still in the world. Abba, holy God, protect those whom you have given me with your name, the name that you gave me, so that they may be one, even as we are one. It was Tuesday morning, April 11th, at 7 a.m., this last Tuesday, April 11th, at 7 a.m. And I am not a morning person. However, I had agreed to meet some church leaders of our church and some new staff from the city of Palm Springs who were interested in learning more about our feeding ministry. And I knew that our feeding ministry wanted to get to know these new staff members and see more how we could help. It was going to be a really important meeting. So begrudgingly, I said, okay, I will meet you in Fellowship Hall at 7 a.m. on Tuesday the 11th. So that's what I did. Of course, it was an excellent reason to get up early, and I was tired. I was draggy, and I must admit, I was even a little bit more pre-coffee grouchy than usual. And I got there pretty close to 7. 
And when I walked into Fellowship Hall, well, it felt a little bit like Dorothy and her friends that w walked into the Emerald City because there was this beautiful beehive of activity of all sorts going on in our Fellowship Hall. It's one of the mornings that we do what we call Just Pancakes, where we feed hungry people breakfast. And the Fellowship Hall was filled with people. And as I walked in the door, there are a couple of nice people greeting me and greeting everybody. And then there's the lovely Joel, who used to be one of the hungry people we would feed, who's gotten a job and gotten on his feet and gotten his own apartment and is now helping every time we do a meal and brings beverages to everybody and we've hired him to help us with our, sta our security and he was just so happy to see me and he was happy to see everybody and, and I go into the kitchen and everybody there is so happy to be serving food and being there with one another and there's one of the guests that's playing the piano out and it's so good, it's so beautiful and some of our volunteers are sitting with the guests and talking with them and it's just beautiful. And then I, I walk outside the fellowship hall to the backyard and, and that's where our composting ministry is getting off the ground and they're delivering mulch to get our whole first community composting in the city of Palm Springs project going. And there's some more of our volunteers and our and, uh, church people and there's people from desert composting and everybody's having a great time. And besides that, this mulch smells so good like like eucalyptus. It's amazing. And, uh, and then there's a guy that's one of the guests from the breakfast, and, and he's, a, he's homeless right now, but he's also a, a barber, and he knows how helpful it is to cut people's hair much better, make them feel. So he's just seeing if anybody wants to get a haircut, and we've got a little sink behind our fellowship hall, so he's cleaning it up to do haircuts, and he's so excited to do that. And it just was like fantastic. We had this great meeting with the people from, from the Palm Springs city, and, and I left this time, this about an hour of, of engagement, just feeling so exhilarated, as I could tell everybody else was too. Um, I couldn't believe what a great mood I was in um, after an hour of all these incredible things that people were up to, giving and receiving, and, and all the joy that it was creating, and, and all the energy that it was creating. And I felt like that spirit of creativity could just go on and on and on. It was really great. What we have here is a great example of what Stephen Covey's, in his book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, would call habit number six the habit called synergize, or create synergy. And uh, as you well, may well know, synergy is about uh, creating a situation where the sum of something is far greater than its individual parts. The equation for synergy is one plus one equals three, or 30, or 30,000. That's how synergy works. As Stephen Covey will say, nature provides all these different examples of synergy. He says, if you plant two plants close together, the roots commingle and improve the quality of soil so that both plants will grow better than if they were separated. One plus one equals a lot more than one plus one, right? Or if you put two pieces of wood together, they will hold much more than the total held by one separately. My favorite example, the perfect V-shaped formation of geese in flight. When they're doing this, this, I guess, adds 71% more flying range for the geese than if they were flying on their own. That's because as each bird flaps its wings in this particular formation, it creates an uplift that reduces air friction for the birds that follow. And when, one, and when the lead goose gets tired, it just goes back to the back while another goose takes its place. And just these geese just can zoom forever. Covey says that synergy is the hope for the world. If we can learn to work together, bringing our varied gifts and our energies together, truly together into a singular focus, 
we will create community of continuing momentum that only increases its ability to heal and transform one another and heal and transform the universe. In our scripture reading today, Jesus is getting ready to journey to the cross so that he will give up his life in order to rise again and live in him, making us and him more spiritually powerful than ever before. As we've been reminding ourselves throughout this preaching series, Jesus said and told his disciples that after he died and rose again and ascended into heaven, his disciples would be able to do more work than he did, even greater works than he did. That's one of the key characteristics of Easter people. They acknowledge and embrace the truth that inviting the risen Christ into their hearts, that resurrected spirit, really acknowledging that presence and that reality, it allows them to accomplish amazing things with God's love, move mountains even, completely revitalize a dying monastery, as one example that we shared last week. In this prayer that Jesus offers his disciples in our scripture today, we hear how this ability to do greater things that we've been thinking about, how this, this, abil- how this dynamic is going to work. And as Jesus says in this prayer, it's about Easter people becoming one, becoming one with one another like Jesus and God are one with one another, becoming one with God and Jesus as they are one with us, becoming the resurrected body, focusing on giving and receiving God's spirit, God's love, God's tasks and dreams for the same interconnected purpose. Each of us, in our own way, becoming part of the one. It's not being part of this community so that each one of us can get out of it what we need. That is a byproduct. What Jesus is praying in this prayer over his disciples is that we come together like geese flying in V formation so we can move onward on the path of life together because together we can do so much more than what any of us could do on our own, even for what we ourselves need. How much synergy can we generate for God? And God's party, here, there, everywhere. Jesus' prayer that we all might be one as God and Jesus are one, well, it's coming to us today in a very special way at the United Methodist Church of Palm Springs because today we want to invite everyone who is part of our community or who isn't yet but would like to be in some way to say yes to some new opportunity to be part of our resurrected body. And especially as each and every one of us has linked in, in some way, to discover how we're adding to the spiritual synergy that we have the capacity to generate. That's why we've created an event today called the UMCPS Sign up Arama, and this document that we're calling our RAMA. Now, why do we call it our RAMA? Well, because it sounds better than brochure, and it's a clever way of connecting it to our niftily named event. And on top of that, I just learned that RAMA, or maybe it's Rama, is the name of one of the most popular Hindu deities, the god of chivalry and virtuousness, i.e. the creator of beloved community, as they'd say in Christian circles. So... This Rama, our brochure for our sign up a Rama, can help but bring lots and lots of great spirit to our Kingdom of God party project. And so here's our ministry developer, Paul Nixon, who's going to tell us a little more about what's in our sacred feast of faithful possibilities, our Rama. Friends, it is Sign Up Arama, and you received this brochure um, in by email, or you can pull it up on your computer just below the YouTube um, screen. 
and it is a fourfold brochure. A lot going on. If you open it up all the way, you on one side you will notice, and everything is backwards on this screen, I believe, but you will notice there are nine different opportunities, and I'm just going to kind of walk through those for you real quick. With each of the opportunities, there's a box where you can just say simply, tell me more. No commitments. Or another one is, sign me up, which is to say somehow, some way, I'd love to be a part of that. Okay. Um, in both cases, someone still has to contact you to get you on the team, and they will be contacting you quickly after you make this response. So um, you can um, reach out to the church office and um, just let them know it, it, the, the brochure is not a, an electronic brochure like some are, but just let them know, I'd like to be a part of the um, Potluck Luncheon Volunteers, which is number one. Um, potluck Luncheon Volunteers is all about setting up and taking down potlucks, which happen about six times a year, and they are a blast. Um, but it's a great opportunity to meet folks and to be helpful. Number two was the, the Pride Celebration. That is a um, major project each year as we think about how we're going to um, be present um, in the larger community as a reconciling and affirming community. And we've been doing that for years now and always a good turnout, but we, we need a group working between now and then to sort of redesign the whole Pride um, um, plan for 2023. Cheryl Jones is the contact and we would love to have your input um, as a part of that team, thinking about all of that. Next one is number three, the composting ministry. Brand new, Pam Hill's in charge. We are the first um, site for community composting in Palm Springs. We won't be the last, but we're setting the pace and it is a significant step toward an environmentally friendly way of dealing with waste in the desert. And I, um, I encourage you to, um, to, to explore, especially if you like to get in the dirt and to play in nature. Um, number four, Sunday morning hospitality. This actually is Sunday morning at the church building. So for some of you online folks, this probably was, won't be your thing. But we have a blast in the building on Sunday. And it might be that um, on certain Sundays you, you, could, you might be available to come in and to help with greeting. Um, Doug Ostyk is in charge of this. It's a ministry about making worship warm and welcoming to people as we relate to one another. A lot of folks coming in who've been um, out of... Um, organized religion for decades and kind of like t tentatively coming in only to discover, wow, I didn't know church could be like this. You could be a part of that, of that wow um, through greeting. Um, ministry five is calling and cards. Um, Carrie Allen is the contact person. And this is basically reaching out to people during birthdays and also, um, um, so there's a card part of it. There's also the calling part. Those are separate things. You can be part of either or both of those. Um, you will be assigned some folks to, um, to befriend. And it's just basically befriending folks, many of whom are older and are going through some tough times in their life. Oh my goodness, they appreciate the, um, the, the camaraderie and the fact that someone is remembering them and cares about them and is present to listen to their latest stories in their lives. Number six, feeding ministries. It's a big one, and one of the calling cards of our church is a signature ministry. Everybody in town seems to know that goes on. It is an amazing ministry. John Jones is the contact, and we do have openings even now. Um, it's about feeding, but also about clothing and caring for hungry and unhoused people. Um, we would love to we would love for you to be a part of that. And, and quite honestly, that one is one that often bring your neighbor. They don't need to be a member of the church. It is really a community project. Opportunity seven is music ministry. There are multiple music ministries um, within the church, ranging from bell choir to the regular choir to other opportunities. And contact Wayne um, Hinton, and he will get back with you and help you um, discover um, what the opportunities are in music um, during the year. We are really, really blessed to have a great music ministry. We are starting children's ministry again and um, the United Methodist Church of Palm Springs with a ministry called Kid Zone, which right now is scheduled to be a Sunday afternoon ministry at least through the summer, once a month, just once a month. And so if you like playing with kids and helping them get in touch with God and also helping you to get in touch with your inner child, um, Amy Bonson is the contact. And I'm actually volunteering in that one myself. Um, so once 
a month on a Sunday afternoon, early evening. We'll be meeting in the Walker Smith building and just having a good old time with the children. Um, number nine, United, Meth United Women of Faith. This is, used to be called United Methodist Women, and um, that group has gone inactive because of a lot of turnover and the pandemic and all of that. Annette Funk is trying to reorganize that. If you would like to be a part of United Women of Faith, that's 09. Um, on the other side, <clears throat> there is a, a, a whole list of things that you could ask for more information about. Okay. Any of those things that look interesting to you, ask away. And um, also, even if you're up to your eyeballs, busy with many good things, um, consider signing up to sponsor altar flowers on a Sunday or to bring refreshments if you um, are a part of the, um, the on-site congregation occasionally. Um, it's 52 Sundays a year, and it, it helps so much when we all can pitch in in those ways. That, those are not long-term commitments, but just kind of very um, targeted days. And you can pick a day, even, that meant like an anniversary or birthday or something like that. So anyway, this is the Sign Up Arama brochure, and we're going to have a little music now as we think about our commitments and the possibilities of what God might do. Remember, you don't have to commit to any of those nine things. You could just ask for information. Um, but we hope that everybody can participate in some way um, in reaching out to embrace their piece of the total ministry of the church, the body of Christ in Palm Springs. Thanks, Paul. And now as we hear our special music for today, a song that beautifully describes all the different ways or some of the variety of ways that we become beautiful, beloved community, God's party. I want you to take this opportunity to prayerfully sit and think about how you, and pray about how you, even you, would like to contribute something new to our church community, or to whatever church community you would like to add synergy to. Listen to Jesus praying over you. Oh God, I'm in the world no more, but while I am coming to you, my disciples are still in the world. Protect them, Abba God, those who you have given me with your name, the name that you gave me, so that they may be one, even as we are one. Keep hearing Jesus call you to be one, just as he and God are one. And then if you remember Jeffrey Notke's wonderful sermon about how all of us are keys on a piano enabled by God to create beautiful harmonies and music together of all sorts, let your divine imagination follow your curiosities in that direction. And think about, indeed, what you might like to do. As one of the great preachers of our Methodist history, H.E. Luckock once said, no one can whistle a symphony. It takes a whole orchestra to play it. And if our world ever needed beautiful music, it is today. Amen. Make me a channel of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me bring your love. Where there is injury, your pardon, Lord. And where this doubt to As to console, to be understood, as to understand, to be loved, as to love with all my soul.
receive, and in dying that we're born to eternal life. Each week we have a chance to give back um, something of who we are. This week, a big part of that giving is thinking about our um, our talents, our interest, our time through Sign Up Arama. But also, um, always, we appreciate the financial commitments that together the members of this community make to keep this um, ministry um, growing, expanding, and blessing many. Um, you can give um, in multiple ways. You can give by check and mail to the P.O. box you see on the screen. You can give by um, um, text. You can give by um, going on the website and making a one-time gift or setting up automatic um, giving. We thank you for your financial support. Thank you, Paul. Let us pray. Well, gracious and loving God, we are so grateful for all the ways your life and your love and your light comes to us for the healing and transformation of our own hearts, minds, souls, families, and concerns. But then how you use that to help others in ways that so far transcend what we think is possible for us to do because of that miracle of synergy when we come together in your name, committed to your project of healing, and we see just how far-reaching our ability to do that can be. So God, help us choose to do that. Choose to say yes to trying some new things and choosing to say yes to committing ourselves to a community and experience of interdependence where we are sharing with others in our efforts, prayerfully, faithfully, and with divine enthusiasm, your divine enthusiasm. We pray this prayer so that your healing, powerful and true, can touch and transform our communities and our nation and our world. There is no task too big that we cannot be a significant part of when we join with one another and we join with you. So show us the way, God, and keep us ever grateful, ever aware, and evermore in love with you, with Jesus, and one another. We ask all this in Jesus' name and pray together now the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time with us today. I hope it was a blessing for you as it was a blessing for me. And I think a blessing for God's dream for the world. I hope you'll join us next week when we celebrate the church's birthday, Pentecost, and learn even more about what it means to be the resurrected body that has been created since Jesus rose from the tomb. In the meantime, hear this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance and bring you peace as you journey towards those you have 
that you love, those you have yet to meet, and those whom you fear. And may you find some beautiful music being made. Amen. <laughs>